Hello my fellow book lovers, I'm Kaylee and today I'm here to talk to you about one of my absolute favorite science fiction authors and where to get started with her short stories. highlighting Connie Willis. Connie Willis is a writer I discovered in 2019 and I blew through a ton of her short story collections and some of her sto books, novels, that's the word I'm looking for right there, novels as well. So one of the things I love about Connie Willis is that she is definitely science fiction but what she does a lot of are these kind of cute, sweet, oddball comedy love stories. So if you love like old romantic comedies and science fiction and you really like things that are about the characters just as much as they are about the technology, I think you should really give Connie Willis a shot because that's what she does. She explores humanity in these different instances and that is such a powerful thing that she does. In the same time she creates these really enjoyable stories that make you feel good when you finish them and you just feel satisfied at the end, generally speaking. It can be a little overwhelming to know where to get started. A lot of people say get started with her Oxford Time Travel series. Some people say no, no, go with her standalones. I say no, no, get started with her short stories first because once you do, you'll fall in love and then the rest will be history. Now if you are looking to get started with Connie Willis right now, today, this very minute, I suggest picking up A Lot Like Christmas. This is a collection of I think 12 stories and they are all holiday themed. I enjoyed every single story but the three that I would highlight above the others are all seated on the ground, adaptation, and now showing. Like I said, take that with a grain of salt because I enjoyed pretty much every single story in this collection. And then she also has some just like little essays about Christmas and different things like that. And like I think it's suggested movie list because Connie Willis loves Christmas. So pick this up if you're interested in Christmas. So the next place I would get started with Connie Willis if you are looking for what the science fiction community as a whole considers her best short stories would be the best of Connie Willis and that is because every single story in this collection has won some type of a major award like a Hugo or a Nebula, something along those lines. The three that I would recommend overall in this collection are At the Rialto, The Soul Selects Her Own Society, and Inside Job. Now. This collection was a little bit less overall perfect in my opinion, but that's because it's not themed. It's just sort of all over the place, all of her different stories. So it was a little bit more jarring when you were going back and forth. There wasn't like a theme threading it together other than the fact that they're all award winners. Um, but I did really enjoy it overall and I think I gave it a four star. It might have been a five star. And if Goodreads would just give half star ratings, it would make my life a lot easier, but that's a different topic entirely. However, definitely recommend this if you're just looking to get into what the science fiction community as a whole considers her best. Next up is Firewatch, and there are two stories that I would highlight, say, over others in this. The first one would be Firewatch, which is her title piece, and this is part of her Oxford Time Traveler series only it doesn't really fit into the series necessarily. It's more like an exploration in that same kind of world that she's created. So it's about a battle man who's been sent back in time to London during the Blitz and he's trying to keep the St. Paul's Cathedral from being burned down during the Blitz. And I just really enjoy enjoyed the world and it was really interesting because she makes it very apparent the kind of conflict he's going in with because while he will get to leave as long as he survives he gets to leave these people that he's getting to know and care about are going to have to deal with the ramifications of what happens for a long long time so it's definitely a very interesting take and then the other one I want to talk about is Blued Moon which is just a really fun oddball kind of comedy science fiction tale. Next I want to talk about Terra Incognito which is a collection of three novellas. So while I enjoyed all of them I think Remake might be the one I found most intriguing because it really makes you think. It's set in a futuristic portion of our society where at this point we can take any 
form of media and insert somebody into it. So let's say you want to make Casablanca, but instead of Ingrid Bergman, you want it to star Nicole Kidman. All you do is record, film Nicole Kidman in that part, and then you insert it into the original. So this really deals with art and people and the entertainment industry and it was just a really interesting take on an idea of technology and just because we can do something with technology should we which i think is always an important question to ask the next collection i want to talk about is impossible things and probably my favorite in this collection is spice program and i think i'm mispronouncing that but essentially it is about a world where there is um alien contact we have like a whole program where we talk to each other and it's about an emissary who comes and the people that kind of have to deal with the communications and the differences of um, cultures and it's just a really fun funny but insightful read then the last collection i want to talk about is the winds of marble arch and other stories so this is a very hefty, chunky volume that features some of her absolute best works. And this is a Subterranean Press edition, which I absolutely love Subterranean Press. You should check them out. They have put out some really fantastic editions, both original and not original, that are like limited editions, and they're really well constructed. But back to the collection in and of itself. And the two I'd probably highlight in this is Nonstop to Portales, which is about a man who gets wrapped up in a bus tour and then finds out that the bus tour is basically a bunch of people that may be or maybe not from his own timeline. And then the second book I want to talk about is Jack, and that is once again set in the Blitz, but the characters are very different and one of them is very mysterious and you really just need to read it. I can't really say anything without giving you spoilers and I wouldn't want to do that because it's just so delicious to read on its own. And then I just have two more short stories to talk about today. The first one is Take a Look at the Five and Ten and this is a recently released short story that she put out through Subterranean Press but there is also an ebook available and in this, the character is trying to help her sort of grandmother and a doctor with what he's calling a TFBM, which is a flashbulb traumatic, traumatic flashbulb memory. That's what it is. And it's because her memory of a particular Christmas is so crisp, so strong, it's like she actually lives there. And he's trying to decide what kind of a traumatic event has created this type of memory for his research. Once again, this is just a really cute story, but it deals with the nature of emotion and memories and what we as people consider the most powerful emotions and memories not necessarily being the truth. So yes, it's just overall a really cute, fun read and I would definitely recommend it to anybody looking for sort of a little family story that has like a Christmassy feel good nature to it. So the last story I want to talk about today is I Met a Traveler in an Antique Land and this story is something. <laughs> so this is about a man who wanders into a bookstore that turns out to be more than a bookstore. Willis really investigates kind of the idea that everything is digitized and whether or not everything is actually digitized and because people feel like everything is digitized if we do or do not actually end up losing things through our own egos essentially. Well, we don't need this anymore. It's already digitized. I'm sure somebody has handled it. And whether or not we actually are losing art stories, things like that through this kind of negligence. It's done in such a way that 
it's not really a judgment so much as a thought experiment. Like we need to think about what we're doing when we weed out books, when we throw them out. What is actually happening here? So I really felt that it was a very interesting story, but I also felt like the topics that she was exploring were a very worthy topic to kind of make you think. So there you have it. There are all the Connie Willis short story collections I've read and some of the stories that I recommend you starting with. And if you have read Connie Willis, let me know in the comments below. Did you enjoy her stories? Were they maybe not for you? Or if you haven't, are you interested in reading her now? Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to keep up with my channel as I post videos. And until next time, bye!